Okay, episode 439 with Professor Lester Grinspoon is going to be brought to you by a brand new product that I'm really excited to talk to you about called Soul CBD. Um, the founders of that we are friends with, Larry and Oksana, great people, had a chance to hang out with them a couple of years ago, and I just really love what they're doing with BeWellBuzz.com. But they have a, a CBD product that I want to tell you about. It's really awesome, and it's 100% legal in all 50 states. There's no THC, so you do not get high. Um, there's a 60-day money-back guarantee, um, and a lot of CBDs out there, a lot of products um, don't have any CBD in them at all, um, and this has 300 milligrams, and uh, it's incredible. I would highly encourage you to do your research on CBD and learn about all the incredible benefits of it. I can't make any guarantees about anything, obviously, here. But um, I just want to let you guys know that this is available now, and uh, it's incredible. Um, they're offering free shipping over $80, and if you enter the code in HEALTHFREEDOM20, HEALTHFREEDOM20, and go through our link, which will be on extremehealthradio.com slash 439, you'll get 20% off through July 4th. So they're doing some great things in the liposomal forms of CBD, combining it with turmeric. They're really doing some cool stuff. So go over to their website and look at the studies and go do some independent research too and look at studies about CBD and come back and check out um, the link here on extremehealthradio.com slash 439 for uh, Soul CBD. And we're also brought to you by a really great product that I just love so much. I do it every day and I can't I can't recommend it highly enough. It's called Good Morning, Good Evening Qigong. And uh, Qigong is a way to balance your energy. If you feel like you're losing energy or if people suck you of energy or if you don't feel grounded, uh, Qigong is a really great art, a great practice people have been doing for 4,000 years um, in the oriental uh, medicines. And um, there's a reason for it. It's a longevity it's exercise. It helps to ground your energy and helps to bring some clarity. It's great because it's a, a moving meditation. And I really love it a lot. It takes 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. And there's a reason why people have been doing it for 4,000 years. And um, I really recommend it a lot. I, I really highly recommend it. Um, go to our link, check it out, watch the video, and see if it's something that you're interested in. I think you'll be interested in it. Um, if you want to find out the link to the Qigong program that I recommend and the Soul CBD, you can go to extremehealthradio.com slash 439, and there'll be links on that page for you. Okay, welcome, 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 everybody. We appreciate you guys being on. This is episode 439 with Lester Grinspoon. This is going to be a great episode. We're going to talk about marijuana, one of my favorite subjects. These days. These We're days. We're learning a lot, aren't we? Yes, very, very... I don't know what it is. I'm very passionate about this subject matter. Not because I love marijuana or, or ingest it or anything, but I just feel very strange that the government is able to somehow tell us we cannot have a plant. Mm -hmm. And you and I watched a video just yesterday that we posted on our Facebook site of some NFL uh, players, and that was a powerful story too. Yes. Wasn't it? Yeah. They're rallying to, base, lobbying to get... Um, Marijuana sort of reconsidered. Within the NFL, even for the pain and the head injuries and things like that, that people are experiencing traumatic brain injuries and... Uh -huh. and um, yeah, I encourage everyone to watch it on the Facebook page. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know what it is. It should be legal, and it's and it will be eventually. I mean, I understand what it is. It's just money. It's just business. It's just money. It's power. It's control. Uh, but eventually, people are going to wake up, and they are. And so, they are. We got Lester Grinspoon on the show today. This is episode four thirty nine. And if you guys would like to listen to this show on the website, you can do that at extremehealthradio.com forward slash four thirty nine. 
And Lester's website is marijuana-uses.com, and he was the associate professor emeritus of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. Mm -hmm. So he knows a thing or two. Yeah, you think? A thing or three. (laughs) Uh, He was the senior psychiatrist at the Massachusetts Mental Health Center in Boston for 40 years. And his books are uh, Marijuana, the Forbidden Medicine, Marijuana Reconsidered, Psychedelic Drugs Reconsidered, Psychedelic Reflections, Drug Control in a Free Society, Cocaine, a Drug and Its Social Evolution, Speed Culture, Amphetamine Use and Abuse in America. So uh, he's got some extensive uh, background in all of this. And the cool thing about him, too, is that he uh, set out originally to to um, disprove and discredit <laughs> marijuana. So mm-hmm. this is awesome, this turnaround that he had back in 1966. So uh, thank you so much, Lester, for being on the show today. We, we really appreciate that. Oh, it's a pleasure. So I'm very fascinated by people, especially uh, that have, um, how do I want to say, like mainstream sort of jobs in, in the public, like you did in 1966, uh, that have a radical turnaround that directly affects their reputation and their job and their income and their career. Uh, many people that are faced with this sort of uh, cognitive dissonance that you were in 66 uh, crumble under the pressure and continue going down the status quo, but you felt like this was too important, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It uh, it seemed to me that... Uh that uh, at the time I well, I tell you how I became interested in it I uh, I um, met at Carl Sagan at he and I were both interested and in, very interested in opposing the Vietnam War and in some of those shared activities we grew to know each other mm-hmm. and we became closest friends I was best man at his last two weddings oh wow and um I uh I knew nothing about marijuana at that time. I I didn't understand that I didn't know anything about it because <laughs> I would, uh, you know, the first time I went to a party at his, my wife and I went to a party at his house. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carl was smoking marijuana, and so we were his friends. Uh oh. <laughs> and I, this rather newly minted doctor who thought he knew everything about drugs, would say, and I've said this to many people, hey, you're going to harm yourself. That's a harmful drug, and you shouldn't be using it. So you said that to Carl Sagan? Oh, well, Carl and I were very good friends. <laughs> very good friends. And, uh, and, uh, That's funny. Uh, I, I, he turned to me, he took a puff, and he said, Lester, here, take a puff. You'll love it. It's not harmful. <laughs> and when I saw through him so many people, and these people were not uh, slouches, they were very, uh, you know, very sharp people, mm-hmm. uh, I decided, well, maybe I better get into the Conway Library, the Harvard Library, and uh, be sure I'll muster the uh, medical and scientific evidence which underlay this uh, uh, prohibition. And I had my first marijuana epiphany. Mm. I discovered I was 180 degrees wrong. I discovered that not only was this not a harmful drug, but it was undoubtedly the least toxic drug uh, we know of. I mean, either in the pharmacopoeia or recreational drugs or what have you, this is not a harmful drug. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first, I I then began my, what, what, what happened was I published a short paper in Scientific American to this effect, and that brought a lot of people, uh, three publishers came to my office and urged me to do a book. And uh, Really? I, yeah, I had already done one book on schizophrenia, but I had no intention of getting sidetracked <laughs> wow. on this. But, uh, I'm surprised I, they wanted I, you to do that. Well, they wanted, yeah, they were real. So, Progressive. So, so were two other presses, but I decided to go with Harvard. I decided to do it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I went with Harvard because uh, 
they uh, they it seemed to me they are a conservative press and uh, uh, the book might be taken seriously. Mm. But at the same time, uh, and, and also my son, when I was working on the piece of Scientific American at home, that's the only my ten year old son. Uh, that's the only thing uh, I've ever done that he was interested in. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, unfortunately, he had to use it as he developed leukemia, that acute lymphocytic leukemia that very year. Mm. Oh, wow. uh, Towards the end of his life, he was, uh, he used this to... uh, to, uh, it was a great thing he feared most was the vomiting in his chemotherapy, and this just knocked the vomiting out completely. Mm. And at any rate, uh, and so they made a deal if, uh, that I wanted to be sure the book would be in my hands so that he could see it before he departed. He was very interested in this. Mm-hmm. And indeed, they said if we made a deal, if you will compress the time, we would. You would ordinarily get to write the book. We will compress the publishing time. And indeed, they had a book in my hands in March, tw- a bound book in March 24th, 1971. And uh, that began the whole uh, marijuana involvement. <laughs> wow. What a story. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Ooh. So. When um, when you said earlier that uh, marijuana is a, it's actually it should be called cannabis, right? I mean, not marijuana, but yeah, and now I, it, it, you know, marijuana. In fact, as a medicine, I uh, am now calling it uh, cannabinopathic medicine. Mm-hmm. You know, like we we Western physicians uh, practice allopathic medicine. Other people practice osteopathic medicine Mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. And I think a better name than medical marijuana because marijuana has such unfortunate, unfortunately, and unfortunate, untrue uh, connotations for Mm -hmm. people. I think it's better to call the medicine uh, cannabinopathy or cannabinopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. It's, well, it's probably word. because no one can say it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, first you have to learn how to twist your tongue. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> well, that word marijuana was sort of uh, made up, wasn't it, by from uh, people that were saying that the black people were uh, on this dangerous drug called marijuana and raping white women back in the 1930s and things and 20s. But yeah, so it's a bizarre word, um, marijuana, isn't it? Yeah, and we just, uh, it, it, it was a word originally spelled with a J, but most people spell it with an H now, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it's much better to call it cannabis, but we're stuck with marijuana. And, you know, I think the image of marijuana is certainly changing now when mm-hmm. uh, the fact is that about 55% of people uh, in this country seem to be interested in uh, in getting rid of the prohibition altogether, and seventy percent are interested in uh, in having medical marijuana uh, programs in their state. Mm-hmm. And indeed, we now have uh, uh, about twenty five states where medical marijuana is allowed. Mm-hmm. And this, now, you know, uh, we say is allowed, but the states. Uh, uh, arrogate to themselves the right to decide which signs and symptoms for which marijuana can be used as a medicine. Mm-hmm. And some of those are so limited, uh, as in New Jersey, it's hardly hardly worth it. But, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but they legalized the stem. It's <laughs> moving in this direction very rapidly and moving toward get, getting rid of this prohibition altogether. As you know, there are a number of states now which have already done that, and more states will do it this fall. So mm-hmm. there's no question uh, this is going to be a drug which I hope will be, it has to be regulated, but mm-hmm. uh, like alcohol, uh, not like some, uh, uh, some uh, not, not like the drugs it's classified with now, heroin and LSD and so mm-hmm. forth and so on. It should be regulated like alcohol available to adults. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and uh, to people who need it as a medicine of any age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, it's such a it's chemically complex plant. You know, it's over 135 strains. I think. I think there's over 5,000 uses for this uh, plant, and you know, I oh, think well. that's possibly why they're. Well, it's impossible to put a number on those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't know how many strains there are, but uh, there are certainly a lot. And, of course, new ones, because mm-hmm. of crossing one strain with another, are being invented uh, every day. There's even one in Europe that's named after me, Dr. Grinspoon. It's just wow. it's hard to find in this country, but it's, oh in, in fact, it's a very nice it, it provides a very nice high. <laughs> what do you think about people? You said earlier that um, you know this is and this is true that marijuana has never caused any deaths or anything like that. What do you think about uh, people that say they try to use that whole slippery slope logical fallacy and say, "Well, marijuana is a gateway drug." It's That's gonna- nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> it's just plain nonsense. I mean, there are people who, let's say will use heroin or whatever uh, street uh, name there is for it. And they'll do it anyways. But that they use marijuana is not going to lead them. It's not an essential step in getting it. Uh, That's absolutely nonsense. And in fact, uh, I think that uh, if anything, it might diminish the interest in other drugs because... You know, it has so many uses, and these people are interested in the recreational use of it. And this is by far the best recreational drug. Not only best in terms of what the person who wants to use it for fun, but uh, because it's so lacking in toxicity. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't wake up with a hangover. You know, uh, you don't get into any trouble with your liver and so forth. It, it's it, it's the safest drug to use recreationally. Mm-hmm. And in a rational country, we would be saying, listen, if you're bound to determine to use some psychoactive drug, use this, not alcohol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. Isn't it legal in Amsterdam? Uh, Is that correct? I don't know. Uh, I, I think it must be because nobody, uh, you can buy it in any number of places and uh, people, uh, people don't smoke it in public in Amsterdam, mm-hmm. but certainly uh, when I've been there, I've seen people smoke it out in the uh, the big grounds, the, the playground they have and so forth. Uh, not very often, but uh, I, I, I don't know whether it's technically legal, but uh, nobody... Nobody gets arrested in Amsterdam. Yeah, right, right. I'm sure. <laughs> have you, um, have you, or are you excited about where we've come? Because you started all this in in the late '60s, early '70s, with all your research and books and things, and now here we are, 2016, and it seems as though, like you're saying, that more and more states are going to be getting on board. Um, I think what they need to do is just get really creative and turn and figure out how to how to. Uh, how to wrap some laws around it. But are, are you excited about the progression of people's open-mindedness? Oh, I, yes, I certainly am. You know, it's interesting. In uh, w- When the book was ready for publication, uh, Carl Sagan and I used to read each other's manuscripts. And he read Marijuana Reconsidered. Mm-hmm. And he said, I can't give the exact words, but he said something like, Lester, this is an excellent book, but you made one big mistake. Uh-oh. And I said, Carl, what was that? He said, in the last chapter, you'd be, you predicted that the prohibition would be gone in 10 years. Mm. This was in 71. <laughs> oh, wow. I said, well, Carl, how long do you think it's going to take? Two years at the most. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my gosh. Wow. Uh, 
Carl was the ultimate <laughs> rational man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he believed that once people learned all the things he learned from reading marijuana reconsidered, why, abs- of course, this absurd prohibition would just <laughs> fall through the floor. <laughs> well, you know what? I bet you he would have been correct had the Internet. For I think the Internet is, is helping people to open their minds and to learn new well, information. Well, if it had been published now, if, if we were in the same state with, re- with respect to marijuana now... And and I think you're right. And the internet were around. It might have traveled very, very fast. <laughs> yeah. So what did your uh, what did all your colleagues think? Because you were were you working at Harvard at the time that you wrote all these books? Yeah. And in fact, um, I was just sending somebody a paper called Harvard Marijuana and Me. <laughs> oh, nice. I was. Uh, I wrote a paper because uh, it was interesting. My experience at Harvard. I was on a track. A Processorial track, uh-huh. and my uh, na- uh, my chief put me up for a pro- full professorship in the mid seventies. Wow! And at that time, I had published uh, something like forty or fifty papers and a book on schizophrenia mm-hmm. and marijuana reconsidered, and. Uh, it must have been pretty, maybe even a little sooner because I was already working on another book. But <clears throat> but at any rate, uh, he came back from the promotions committee and he called me, he was my chief, called me down to the office and he uh-huh. was uh, almost as, as distraught as I was when I got <laughs> the news they had turned me down. Oh, really? And I said, why? He said, well, they love your book on schizophrenia, but they really disliked marijuana reconsidered. Mm. And I said, well, wh- what was the problem with it? He said, it's, they thought it was much too controversial. Mm-hmm. Now, these are, those are the exact words he used. And, you know, he had no reason to to tell me anything but what they said he was always very straight with me Mm -hmm. and I said uh, uh, too controversial that's the reason Uh, Jack aren't we in the academy what does controversy have to do with it what do they think of the scholarship (laughs) he held up his hands he said now now Lester don't don't attack me I'm, I'm just I'm just the messenger here Hmm. And he said, they, and they asked me to report to them what you're doing next. Uh-oh. And I was a little angry, and I said to him, I wasn't quite true. I said, well, I'm an intellectual will of the wisp, and I'm <laughs> not sure what I'm doing next. It wasn't true. I was <laughs> starting a book, but one they would have approved of, it was a book on amphetamines, which... Uh, uh, you know, became important in its own right because it helped to stop the uh, the overuse of amphetamine. Mm-hmm. But at any rate, that's how it was left. And then uh, I, you know, I took advantage of that. At first, I was very obviously disappointed, and so was my family. But I figured that's part of the price I have to pay if I. You know, I, I I decided that I would uh, I didn't have any obligation to go to faculty meetings now, mm-hmm. and so uh, I didn't. And when people say to me, "Les, how did you get all the time to do the things you did in those forty uh, forty one years?" Mm-hmm. Or whatever, I said, "Easy. I stopped going to faculty." <laughs> <laughs> and I carved out a little extra time for myself. So they weren't required, those meetings? Uh, no. No, oh interesting. Gosh. So you just didn't have I to mean, go? For some people, they were required, but not for me. I was uh, I was not obviously not important to Harvard, and so I... Uh, I decided they weren't that wasn't a, those meetings weren't that important to me and uh, oh, I wow. take advantage of the time did you get any any um, blowback from other colleagues that you worked with about the work that you were doing uh, not really my colleagues uh, I mean some of them saw me as a little odd mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
are eccentric or something. I, yeah. Why would I do a thing like this? Right. But, you know, on a personal level, I, I didn't have any, uh, we're going to have to put up with that because my wife isn't here at the oh, moment. That's, to that's get okay. Home. No problem. No worries. So, uh, uh, But my colleagues, uh, you know, as I say, I thought they probably thought I was a little stranger in doing this, but no, otherwise I didn't have any difficulty with them at all. Wow, mm. that's so so interesting. So, what is your? Um, do you consume marijuana? I'm sorry, cannabis. I see we, so we get these words mixed up. <laughs> right? Do you consume cannabis? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm here. That me- I can't stop that message there. Now, would you? Repeat <laughs> <it>? <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, now, what is your consumption of cannabis like these days? Well, I uh, frankly, there were years in which I used it every night, uh-huh. uh, and I found it helpful but now in you know part of what i loved about cannabis was it, it's a very social drug and i'm sad to report there isn't any they're not one of the 208 residents of this retirement that in in LaSalle village smokes marijuana and i get a little bored doing it myself so i do it I limit it now to weekends. Okay. And uh, but I was smoking every day, and I I loved it. I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's been. I think it's been. I don't want to get into this now because uh, <laughs> that would begin into. You know, I think there are. Oh dear. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no problem. If I could just pick it up and drop it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, That's great. I, I, you know, over the years, when I first started this, I thought it was a recreational drug, period. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I now know that it's more than that. It's a very interesting medicine. And, in fact, I wrote a book on that, uh, Marijuana, the Forbidden Medicine, in 1993, and as you probably know, its uses of medicine is just booming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a third use, and that's what I call enhancement. Enhancement of a variety of uh, human capacities. Now, you know, there are a couple of those enhancements which are obvious to anybody who smokes, and that is uh, an ordinary uh, meal can taste like a... Uh, a gourmet <laughs> wow. mm. preparation. Uh, and the other one is sex. It certainly uh, intensifies the sexual experience. Interesting. But beyond that, uh, when I talk about enhancement, I mean that it can enhance one's appreciation of art, uh, going out to see uh, the natural wonders if you're out for a walk or what uh, it enhances many different activities mm-hmm. it it's like it allows you to peek around corners uh, you're not ordinarily uh, uh, capable of mm-hmm. so I for me uh, uh, all three of these uh, uh, uses have been very important Mm-hmm. And uh, the enhancement, you know, for example, uh, Carl Sagan uh, uh, used to use it uh, for his work. I remember one night uh, uh, when uh, people would send me gifts <laughs> from the West Coast with phony return addresses. Mm-hmm. And one time, this was years ago, of course, he died in 1996. Years ago, uh, uh, they, uh, the Sagans were in town, and we went in to have dinner with him. And because his his face had appeared on Time magazine, we couldn't go to a restaurant. Oh no! I bet have dinner in the in his suite at the Ribs. And I brought these these new uh, couple of these new uh, things that the 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 person anonymously said this is new is Sinsomia, which of course now. Uh, doesn't it's a term that is much more generic than his uh, but that's another matter but <laughs> at any rate it was really very nice and uh, as we were leaving he said to me 
he knew that he could see my little case that I carried them, and I had one more left, one more uh, joint. Mm-hmm. And he said, Lester, is I have to finish chapter, the last chapter of whatever book he was writing then. I have to get it done tomorrow. And that, you know, if I could, if, I, if you would give me that, I'm sure it would be very helpful to me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, you know, when, uh, when Carl <laughs> visited us on the Cape, Carl Sagan was one of the hardest working men I've ever known. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would take his son and uh, uh, in my boat as I went out fishing and drop him at a, off at a little uh, sand island where he would just walk around with his little recorder uh, working. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, a lot of people oh. don't realize that uh, these people, you know, I think the media has put out this whole thing about how if you do marijuana, it's going to be a gateway drug or it's going to cause you to sit in your mom's basement and not go anywhere with your life. Dumbing you down. Dumbing you down, making you stupid. But, I mean, you say that about Carl Sagan being one of the hardest working men uh, you've known, and the same thing is true um, the, with the author Graham Hancock, who wrote Fingerprints of the Gods, uh, Magicians of the Gods. Uh, uh-huh. He did it every day for 30 years, and uh, it greatly enhanced his writing and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and how many people haven't come out with that uh, part of their lives? But how many creative, productive people? Mm-hmm. Because... Uh, uh, it, it that, that's one of the myths about marijuana. It uh, it dumbs you down. It makes you stupid. It slows you down. You you, uh, you become a pothead, whatever that is, and so forth and so on. Uh, all those things are so wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean that I I believe everybody should smoke it. Lots of people don't like it. I certainly don't want children using it, except when it's has to be used medically. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but at any rate, it's not all of those things. It's a very, and, and people have to learn to use it too. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Uh, some people don't get it high on the first time. For It takes a while. And uh, you have to, at first you're so dazzled by the, you know, the, the high that you have that's pleasurable. But I think people who use it a lot begin to think it's uh, it's it's useful. You know, there's a, uh, Allen Ginsberg wrote the story about how he couldn't. Everybody else would talk about this particular artist. I'm not sure I can remember the name of the artist. But he, when he went to the Museum of Modern Art in New York, he would look at it and he just couldn't get it. What were they? And so he decided to smoke one day purposely, and then walk to the it was within walk, uh, to the Museum of Modern Art, and uh, and for the first time he saw this artist. It's a wonderful essay he wrote. In fact, I've included it in my marijuana uses uh, website. Uh, which is the website which I had hoped to use as a basis for writing a third book on the third use of marijuana as an enhancement. People use it to enhance various aspects of their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this, this I don't think, comes immediately. You have to have some experience with it. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not certain of that, but I've never met anybody who felt that they they could make use of this uh, right away. This was <laughs> got to be good. You, you got to be it, talented. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you also have to have some experience, uh, in, <laughs> if, if it's proper to say, uh, knowing how to use this drug. Yeah. But at any rate, uh, uh, well, well, it's fascinating too that. Um, you know, two of the most powerfully medicinal plants, uh, which I think are the most sacred plants probably on the entire planet, um, outside of maybe there's, you know, uh, plants that they use, the roots and the leaves for ayahuasca and things like that, but uh, marijuana and tobacco. Tobacco mm-hmm. is an incredibly sacred plant, um, and when consumed correctly and consumed the way the, you know, ancients would do it, very medicinal as well. People talk about, um, you know, parasites coming out of their body and cleansing uh, reactions from tobacco. And, um, you know, it's it's just interesting that tobacco and marijuana, uh, there's so much, 
you know, political uh, controversy. controversy about these things. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it, uh, uh, the trouble with tobacco is, of course, that it has some unfortunate consequences. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh, I gotta turn that off again. <laughs> no. It has some unfortunate consequence. Very, uh, I mean, I don't have to tell you how many people have lost their lives to tobacco. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's quite different from cannabis, which, uh, you know, it's very hard to, uh, scrape up something that you can honestly say is a, Toxicity. With Hello, Lester. This is Harvey Levy returning your call. You're very uh, popular. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I uh, uh, so I I you know I I think that that's where the two substances are quite different, mm-hmm. and the uh, whatever salutary effects tobacco had, uh, they are so dwarfed by. Uh, what cannabis can do uh, uh, in uh, one of its uh, uses as a medicine. What are the current laws in in Massachusetts where you are right now regarding cannabis? Well, it's uh, the current law is that uh, uh, you can possess marijuana, uh, but you can't smoke it privately. Uh, in other words, <laughs> smoking is, uh, using it uh, publicly is out of the question. But we believe that that's going to change in marijuana. There are a number of states now which have just gotten rid of the, uh, the prohibition. Washington, Oregon, Colorado. And, and, you know, if you look at what's going, and we're scheduled to, that's going to come up for a vote in November in this state Mm -hmm. and I think about six other states so uh, while we now have 25 states who will allow its use as medicine Mm -hmm. that is I wonder if it's the same person your wanted man your wanted man hello Lester this is Harvey Levy oh Harvey I'm making a radio broadcast now can I call Uh, oh sure well I'll call you. What time should I call you back? Oh, I'll be done by noon. Okay, I'll give you a call after. Thanks very much. <laughs> You're a wanted man. Whoops. Oh, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, I think you may have pressed a button because we your mic went out. So maybe uh, maybe there's a button that you could press. There we go. I think. Uh, Let's whoops. see. No, we can't hear you. Somehow we can't hear your mic anymore. Can he hear us? I don't think he can hear us anymore. Uh, Lester, can you hear us okay? Uh Uh-oh, I don't think he can hear us. I don't either. We're missing this good... We're missing this talk. That is is such a bust. Shoot. We can hear him talking. Lester, can you hear us okay? No, he can't hear us at all. He's talking, but uh, we have the video going on Skype. Should we hang up on him? Um, (laughs) Let's... This is a bummer. Mm. Lester, can you hear us? Hello, hello. I think when two people are talking on Skype, you uh, you lose it a I little lose bit. Them all. Yeah. Um, Should we hang up on him? Yeah, I can't. I hate to do that because he. Oh man. Um, maybe. Will he realize we hang up on him? Lester, can you hear us? Okay. Uh, we can't hear you. I think we're muted to him for some reason. Yeah, I think we're muted to him. Lester, can you hear us? <laughs> We cannot hear you. We're going to try and call you right back. Is that okay? Let's let's yeah, try that. Bummer. That is too bad because you know it's funny. I don't think you can hear. <sighs> like if you're talking on Skype, I, uh-huh. I think it doesn't allow the person who's talking. If the other person talks at the same time, they can't hear you. Oh. Which is bizarre. So that had to do with the phone call he got in, though. Uh, yeah, because I think he he did something with the. Let's try him again. Hopefully he realizes we lost him. Yes. Right after that call, we couldn't hear anything. I know. He must have pressed a button, I think. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. This is the beauty of internet radio, right? Right. These things happen. We're flexible. 
We're flexible. We're flexitarians. We're flexitarians. <laughs> was such a good, he's so great. I know, right? Good conversation. Come on, Lester. We're rooting for you. Gosh, he darn. Pro- probably doesn't realize that. Uh, He'll realize when we don't talk back, I'm sure. Yeah. He probably knows by now. Okay. Well, thanks for hanging on, everybody. I wanted to do a little song and dance. Oh. You have received Lester and Betsy's telephone line, but we are on the phone right now. Please leave a message. Thank you. Lester, can you hear us? You probably can't hear us. We're just leaving you a message, but uh, it looks like something happened with the phone line there, uh, and we weren't able to hear you anymore. So we'll try calling you back right now. Okay. Let's try this again. Here we go. All the people that are listening are wondering (laughs) what the heck we're doing. Oh yay, Lester! Can you can you hear us? Because we, we cannot hear you anymore, unfortunately. It was doing. I think you did something over to the right, um, and then when you did that, we uh, your mic went out. So okay, how oh, about now? Yay. Ah, there we go. We missed. I'm sorry, I I <laughs> wish my wife were here to take these calls, but she isn't. No she worries. Isn't we. We missed a lot of what you were saying, oh. though, but we were talking about the current laws in uh, Massachusetts and how it's coming up for vote, and then after that, we missed everything you were talking about. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I, hopefully it will pass in Massachusetts, and we will add, we will add one more state. And I think a few others may pass around the country. Mm-hmm. So I think that eventually, state by state, this is happening. The federal government government uh seems to uh be holding things up but you know there are a lot of people in the congress who uh who you know haven't uh, advanced in their understanding of this drug uh since the last century mm-hmm. uh they're not gonna, it's not going to happen uh federally i think for a while but eventually it's just got to. I mean, when all these states and all these people are do- and ignoring the federal uh, law, you know, they don't. Nobody's taking much account of the federal law. If the state says you can use it, people do, mm-hmm. and the feds don't seem to uh, to do much about it. So I think that's going to drop by the wayside too. Mm-hmm. I think the prohibition is just gallop the the uh uh the uh effort to get rid of the prohibi- prohibition is just galloping along now mm-hmm. i think uh i may not be able to see it myself but i think it will be completely done in with uh, within the next few years i think so too we're gonna have a lot of open prison beds aren't we oh i know right <laughs> Uh, that's that's one thing. Good I mean, point. you know, and the arrest. You know, we have been arresting in this country, uh, in the uh, you know, ever since uh, I, I, when I wrote the book Marijuana Reconsidered, we had arrested two hundred thousand. Oh my gosh! Uh, people for marijuana, eighty nine percent for mere possession, most of them are young. Mm-hmm. Now, it's gone up, every, and the height was in 2011 when we arrested just under 900,000 oh. people a year. Again, no. mostly young, 80, exactly the same, 89% for, the, for mere possession. Now, it's, it, the last I saw, it had, it had gone down to 750. It's definitely going down now. But when you consider the harm that with uh, this is over a million people have been arrested, many of them with felony charges, and what that does to a young p- person's career mm-hmm. is enormous. Oh, the gosh. damage from this prohibition, this 80 year, you know, starting in 1937 with the Marijuana Tax Act, mm-hmm. I mean, the damage from this prohibition, someday someone's going to review this and really point out the, uh, the uh, horrendous consequences of our ignorance about this drug, mm-hmm. drug yes. and our eagerness to arrest people 
who used it. It will be, it's enormous. It's unbelievable. It's part of the reason when I learned how many people were being arrested, it's part of the reason I decided not to just let it go with the Scientific American article, but uh, to agree with Harvard University Press to write a book. Mm-hmm. Because I figure this is a nice conservative press, and <laughs> maybe, you know, some people will take it seriously. I also made a resolution when I was using the book. While I had come from physician, from a position of believing it's harmful, now I knew it was remarkably non-toxic. But as I wrote this book and read many accounts, uh, there, there are chapters in the book about accounts, uh, old and new, uh, of use, I decided I wanted to do this myself. It sounded so interesting. Mm-hmm. But I made a resolution that I would not do it until two years after the book was published. Mm. And I, I remember exactly the day... <laughs> It was, I should have waited till June, two years later. It came out in June 71. But in May of 71, I, you know, I was testifying all over the country, Congress and state legislators. And I was before a state legislature. And there was one very big man. I mean, he was tall and big all around. And uh, it was clear that the questions he was asking me as a witness were pretty, uh, suggested he was pretty hostile to what I was saying. Wow. So he came up with a question I wanted to, uh, the reason I didn't use it for those years, because I didn't want to, I knew I'd be asked, doctor, have you ever used marijuana? Oh, yeah. I wanted to honestly be able to say honestly no, and uh, when this man asked this question in this very hostile way of me, he was just so nasty about it. And I said to him, uh, "Mr. So and So, I would be glad to answer that question. I can't remember the exact words, uh-huh. but I answer affirmatively. Would that?" compromise your view of what I've been talking about for this last 20 minutes or whatever. Uh He stood up on his legs, and they were on a daze, you know, and he looked down at me, and he pointed at me, and he said, you, sir, are being impertinent. Mm. And he turned around and walked out the back door of the hearing room. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Wow. The Betsy that night, I said, hey, the time has come. It's almost two years. We're gonna. We're gonna <laughs> now is the time. Now's the time. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lester, I got a couple uh, stats for you. Uh, I just pulled up. Um, but before that, um, you know, the state of Colorado, I, th- I think it's in the billions now in terms of tax revenue, and uh, violent crime has dropped. Uh, car yeah. crashes have dropped in Cal in Colorado. It's just in changing the entire economy there but i have some stats here and 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 that money a lot of that money is going to education building schools repairing i mean that is is such a smart way to use it because we need to give education this country a big boost i think colorado is is a very smart state oh gosh progressive and um yeah i mean it's incredible what it's doing for the economy with tax revenue like you said and they're using that money for education and then um all of the violent crimes are down uh, car crashes are down but um there's a stat here that says uh in terms of and adolescent use is down too yes yes everybody thought oh this means more kids are gonna be uh, it's down Mm mm-hmm yeah, it's, it's no longer the forbidden fruit. It's down. <laughs> I know it's it's proving. Um, here it says uh, on ACLU dot org that uh, over seven million people were busted from having pot from two thousand one to two thousand ten, and in two thousand ten, cops made one pot bust every thirty seven seconds. Yeah, well, isn't that crazy? The cops loved that duty. There was no danger. It was easy, you know. Every, uh, yeah. You can't blame them. That was easy work, you know. If you're doing work and you get an easy assignment, why not? I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't mean that in any way to uh, 
to uh, uh, disrespect the police officers, but you know that was their job, and that was an easy part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy. You see these or read these stories of cops busting into homes, shooting dogs, and taking people, you know, and then they find out that you know they're in the wrong home, and it's just mm-hmm. it's so backwards. What's going on with, uh, with this plant that grows out of the ground? Um, mm-hmm. In our society, it's just the the most bizarre thing ever. Yeah, as I say, someday somebody's going to look back, back on this, and we're all going to say, "Wow, did we do the what?" You know, people who are alive when this comes out uh, and oh, yeah. who read it will not believe that this happened uh, in our time. You know, mm-hmm. this this prohibition happened, and its consequences yeah. Uh, yeah. followed. Yeah, that's so uh, fascinating. I want to tell everyone about your books, too. Um, I, I'm interested in the psycho, uh, psych, uh, d- uh, psychedelic drugs reconsidered, but uh, is your main one that people should look at uh, marijuana reconsidered, do you think? Well, marijuana reconsidered is a little bit out of date now, in a sense. You, I would advise people to s- skip the chapter on chemistry, but, you know, the basic stuff is right there. Uh, if you want to, it was right there in when I wrote it, and it's still there about how harmful it is. It also suggests how useful it is, and it even has a chapter on the medical use. Mm-hmm. But if people are interested more in the medical use, then they should read Marijuana the Forbidden Medicine which was published by Yale University Press in 93. There's a second edition from 97. Uh, But even that is out of date. I mean, the principles, the principles are there. But now there are so many more symptoms and syndromes for which it is clearly useful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is important because... It, it to the extent that it replaces the pharmaceutical product, it replaces a drug which is more expensive and undoubtedly more toxic because cannabis is remarkably free of toxicity. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, and you know, uh, you can make the same claim with regard to recreation. I make the same claim. I mean, I never. I used to have a drink every night when I got home. You know, I never measured it, but I can assure you, it was more than one jigger. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't drink alcohol anymore. Yeah. And uh, I'm uh, and, and I, but uh, until recently, I've had a few puffs just about every night. Mm-hmm. Uh, and nothing terrible has happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Over yeah. All the years. Yeah, no, I now, think... I don't know. mean to promote end of one thing, you know, uh, thinking, but uh, uh, I have yet to see uh, people harmed by this drug. Now, adolescents who use it, uh, you know, I think they these are uh, use it furiously. These are kids who are just not figured out what it is they want for themselves in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'd prefer if they had to use some for a period of time something like this as uh, as substituting for figuring that out. Then I would rather be cannabis than any other drug yes. I can think of. And I think cannabis will ultimately may help them to figure out what they want to do with their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I think the title of your book, Reconsidered, that's what we all need to do is is reconsider and look at the facts, look at the evidence, and start looking further and deeper into these subjects. Because when you start peering beyond the veil and you look behind the curtain of what the media is telling us, you start realizing all of the stuff that we're just talking about. So it's... uh, Fascinating discussion. Thank you so much for being on, uh, Lester. I really appreciate your well, time. I should today. mention one thing as a PS because it r- relates to how you introduce the story. If you have another minute, yeah, uh, absolutely. I became in. You know, I, I love to watch uh, the Patriots play football, but I began to think be, as I learned more about you know the damage that these 
the concussions were doing. You know, uh, the chronic traumatic encephalopathy, as it's called. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, that began to disturb me, and I began to feel like a Roman going down to the uh, to Colosseum to see uh, the uh, the gladiators destroy each other, mm -hmm. and. It occurred to me that given the fact that one cannabinoid, CBD, which does not have any psychoactive effect, in the presence of a little bit of THC and the terpenoids, in other words, you have to get it from the, from the bud itself because the terpenoids are awful, often destroyed. Those are the phytochemicals that come with it, mm -hmm. uh, destroyed and processing it processing it into one of the various forms they use now. But if they, if football players, I suggest that football players take a capsule like the one I take uh, every night, uh, which is uh, in just the bud in a, in a double odd capsule, and it's very high in in CBD cannabidiol, non-psychoactive. In fact, it opposes the THC psychoactivity, but it has to have a little bit of THC and the phytochemicals. Uh, I take it every night. And I think that the football players, you know, uh, in fact, some people from Vice me, uh, were here last week to televise, they're gonna do a program on this. Uh, and, and some Canadians are doing a study now on this idea um, that this just, just might protect them. No data, no assurance, no studies, but just if you extrapolate from animal data, cannabis is neuroprotective. It protects neurons. Mm -hmm. uh, and I propose that until something which is definitively known for sure, we have the data in humans to do this, that there would be no harm in giving it to football players an hour before they play or practice mm. uh, to protect, hopefully, uh, putatively to uh, protect them from these uh, repetitive concussions, which no amount of, no, no change in the helmet. The helmet protects the skull it protects the container but it can't protect the brain which moves it's called brain slush mm -hmm. uh, and that's what causes this problem so uh, uh, in fact as I say these people came because they were interested in the, in the idea to to make a uh, television show which will be shown on uh, Vice uh, to this effect and the idea is, you know, I can't promise it will do anything, but if the extra, if it, the extrapolation is on target, then it may be. It isn't going to hurt them. It doesn't affect their play because you know the T. It isn't psychoactive in any way. And so, I had proposed in a short paper, which I tried to get to Roger Goodell, but. Uh, he would not talk to me on the phone, and I never heard from mm. <laughs> response. Mm. I lent it to him, but I put it on the internet, and there's a lot of interest in it. I know myself that I would never, you know, I never interfered with any sp sports my sons wanted to do. But if I were a young father now, and I know what no, I do know. about concussions, I would say, no football. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it's a really big deal. You know, Lester, I'll send you the uh, the link that I shared on our Facebook site. Uh, with the, It was actually a... Um, I mean, Yahoo! Katie Couric yes, story. Yes, CBS story about football uh -huh. players and marijuana. Yeah, you'll, you'll really like to, to watch this. It's uh, But part of that, that we're going to send you to, it's fascinating. It's uh, It goes into um, the use of it for a lot of the NFL players are doing charitable and trying to gain money for research for children with uh, epilepsy oh, and how right. they're treating epileptic children and just seeing these amazing stories going from, you know, f one little girl had, what was it, 500,000 seizures before she was seven years old and started taking this 
medicinally. Yeah, it's and no question. It's no good question. for any kind of epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Adults take it for epilepsy. Uh, it is... It's, in my view, it's the best drug to take to treat epilepsy, regardless mm -hmm. of age. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I make that point in my book, Marijuana, The Forbidden Medicine, but I make that point about a lot of things. It's mm -hmm. a remarkable medicine. Have you, when you were writing your books, did you, did you come across a lot of research um, years and years ago about the epilepsy, or is that kind of a new finding? No, from the uh, 19th century. 19th century? Uh, doctor, yeah, the no doctors used, uh, it, 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 they didn't know about uh, smoking it, but, and because it was insoluble in water, there was an alcoholic solu solution of cannabis. Okay. Uh, and it was called uh, cannabis indica, the bottles of the solution. Okay. And yes, they used that for epilepsy. Mm. It's not a new finding, but the point is, you know, it's such a powerful finding mm -hmm. because it is so useful in so many people for this awful uh, situation. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody the other day, an epileptic, who mm. hasn't had a seizure <laughs> since she started this, which was over a year ago, and oh, that, my she gosh. couldn't believe it. You know, it's a, they have to take it preventively, regularly, but you can take it, as I say, in an, if you don't like the psychoactive part, which some people don't. On the other hand, the psychoactive part is also somewhat of an antidepressant. Sure. So some people like some, but you can, you can get a strain that has just the right amount of THC if you want to have some degree of Yes, you know, the psychoactivity, just if it's enough to take your depression, sure. or, uh, you know, I don't mean depression in the sense of a serious affective disorder. I mean, you know, the kind of day-to-day -day -day depression daily, that right. people sometimes feel. Right. So there, there are many ways in which this is useful, mm -hmm. and it's important to, uh, to get those ratios straight sure. for the way you want to use it as a medicine. Mm -hmm. So, Lester, do you know when the Vice documentary is going to be out? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I think, yeah, I asked them. They said they probably would be September or October. Oh, oh that'll be great. great. Yeah, I'd love to watch that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'd love to read your book. Yes. A few of your books before then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've done some amazing work. Well, enjoy. <laughs> oh, we well, will. Thank you so much, Lester. Uh, I'll be in touch in the next couple of days, and I'll send you the link. Uh, it won't take till till October. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, we Lester. We appreciate your time. Thanks for your work. Well, thank you. Okay. Have a take wonderful it. day. You too. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, that was Lester Grinspoon. Grinspoon, he has a great last name. Doesn't he? I'm really thankful we reconnected with him. Yeah, that was cool. Man, I wasn't sure. Yeah, we kind of lost him there for a few minutes. That was great. He's, yeah. he's so uh, he's so great at just picking right back up where he just goes with the flow. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Some it's shows are like that. Funny how he got his message. We could hear the entire phone I message. love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I don't think there's a way I can edit that out. So no. people who are listening to this show, the thousands of people that are going to hear that, that's going to be hilarious. Yeah. But, um, what was yeah. funny is when when the um, the man first started talking, I thought, do we know him? Because I remember, didn't we just do an interview with uh, oh, Doc what's his, what Levy? Was his name? Last name? Oh, was that his name Levy? Mm -hmm. No way. The first probably guy. What was Doctor Levy? What's what was his first name? Thomas? Do you remember? Thomas? No, it was not. Oh, Isn't that funny though? Oh, that'd be I funny. thought that would be a weird, strange that is coincidence. Funny. Interesting guy. It's interesting when you see um, an older guy doing work like this, and uh, it's just it's so. It's it's weird because it's it's kind of like a like it messes with your mind because you think um, of an older person, I think he's in his late eighties, eighty eight okay. or so. Um, but it's it's just interesting because you don't expect an older person to have the kind of thoughts and the kind of openness openness that he does. Mm -hmm. You usually associate that with closed minded people that are coming from generations past. But obviously, mm -hmm. you know, he's re he's remained open minded his whole life. And so it kind of messes with you a little bit, you know? It it's does. like seeing, you ever see those like uh, videos, like those skateboarders, they're, you know, they dress up as old men, but they're pro, pro skateboarders. Exactly. And you see, you look at them and you think, 
that guy's old, but he's moving his he's body moving like, like he's like 20. He's an 18-year-old, right. It's kind of like the same thing, you know? You know what? Yeah, I totally agree, but I think what's weird about it is... <laughs> We went through this dark age, like from, you know, 19, what'd you say, the 20s up until now, this prohibition era. 37, yeah. Something crazy where before that, I mean, all these thousands of years when this is being used, no, you know, the older generations, they didn't have that, uh, what, what am I trying to say, that negative... Um, we just Propaganda, assume, you mean? We just, no, we just assume now that older people are going to be against and, and close-minded, but that's just recently. That's that generation of his generation that mm-hmm. the evolution has turned into this negative connotation and then kind of, you know, we're kind of coming out of that and awakening up. But it was it had never been like that in societies prior. Yeah. So isn't that funny? We think that and we're surprised, but this is the only time that people our age would probably look at a man his age and think, wow, that's great. He's so open-minded. Yeah, that's true. Because when we're his age, then the people that are younger than us are going to be probably way more progressive than we are. Right. And like all the centuries before. So it's like this is an odd period of time, like he yeah. said, where we're going to look back and think this is rather bizarre. But then it could it could have happened, I guess, with someone like him at his age, when he was our age, mm-hmm. and he would talk to someone who was in their late 80s, I'm sure it was closed minded, but then there would have been far fewer of him than mm-hmm. there are people like us now. Yeah. So it would have been much more rare, but right. um, just fascinating guy. I just think he's such a front runner. I really, yeah, really value his work and, and his, it's, his can- candid, you know, ness about his use. And yeah, I think it's great. It's fascinating that, um, that we didn't even really talk about like with Rick Simpson and, and, you know, the uses for it and mm-hmm. all oh, that. Oh, yeah, a whole other discussion. But yeah. we've had some of those with other people, so I think it was interesting to kind of hear the other side of the political... I mean, we've heard that too, but to hear his own personal stories with yeah. what it kind of took to not care. I mean, I'm sure he got a lot of a lot more flack than he's even talking about. But. The mindset of people back then, to me, it's almost alien. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, are these people actually really <laughs> human? I mean, these were people that were enslaving people. They hated black people. They didn't want women to vote. Um, everyone was, you know, if you got a divorce and you lived in a, some neighborhood, everyone was talking about it. I mean, it was just the mindset back then, the closed mindedness. I mean, yeah. it, it, it follows that he would be this way because he was also against the war in Vietnam. But at the time, that, that would be like someone, um, protesting George W. Bush, you know, five da- days after 9-11. Mm. You know, everyone mm-hmm. was just, whatever Bush said, everyone was going to do. Right. And so at the time, it was like, okay, now, now that we look back and look back at that war, you know, we understand more about what was going on and, and the fact that they protested makes total sense. Mm-hmm. But during the time, I'm sure they were just, you know, ostracized by everybody. I encourage everyone to listen to, I'm not sure what show number it is, but we had Andrea James, a friend of ours on the show, oh, yeah. who came and spoke about... um her her going to prison for a while for um you know was it for drugs no 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 it was not for drugs it was for some some business stuff that she she was a former lawyer and she kind of she was trying to help people basically but you can listen to the story to find out her whole her whole story but she said when she got there she just couldn't believe how many people were you know facing prison time for petty drug use you know or or peddling or whatever and she said so i I thought that was an interesting point to bring up during this talk with him of how many it's true how many what the political ramifications and financial ramifications are riding on this drug you know Uh so think about how that's going to affect as time goes on yeah there's going to be way i mean i read something that a, a couple prisons were being shut down in certain states because there's not enough prisoners to to go there and i'm wondering if it's the states that have um sort of eradicated the the laws of the use of marijuana and cannabis. If you want to hear that show, it's episode 365. There you go, 365. You know, th- this whole cannabis thing is so complex. It's not just, I mean, it's its as complex as a plant as it is in its effect on society. Totally. It's so incredibly complex because you have this trickle-down effect, to borrow um, um, Ronald Reagan's term, but you have this trickle-down effect that it affects prison systems, it affects hospitals, it affects police, it affects so many sectors of society that if we really want to legalize this this plant, which we should, full legalization, if we really want to legalize it, 
they're going to have to get really creative in, in taxation, regulation. They're going to have to get creative because they're used. It's like, it's like people have this idea of like, if you give a child, you know, uh, a $30 a day allowance, you know, which is huge. Mm-hmm. And then you say, sorry, you know, let, let's drop it down to $2 a day. Mm-hmm. The child is used to that 30 right, bucks. The they don't want to give that up. Right, right. So right. it's so complex and it's effects on society that they're going to have to figure out a way because people are waking up. It's only a matter of time until this this plant becomes legalized. This gateway drug. <laughs> gateway drug. 5,000 <laughs> uses, textiles, uh, cars, motors, engines, paints, concrete, uh, uh, shirt, fabrics. It's incredible. And then all the medicinal uses. I mean, it's going to change the entire industry of what it what it is so they better be ready for it well this is my warning to you they've been warned you've been warned say. <laughs> so they better be ready for it it's going to change the the face and the whole structure of everything we've we've grown up with if they just in got, our generation at least i think so too and if they just got creative with everything they could make probably more money if they legalize it than they would if they if they kept it illegal time to get some smart people on the bandwagon that's right it's because of smart creative people yes all right everyone thanks for joining us this was episode 439 with lester grinspoon his website is marijuana m a r i j u a n a marijuana hyphen uses dot com and we'll link that up on this show page extremehealthradio.com dot com slash four thirty nine. We are not going to be doing show notes anymore, but uh, you can listen to the show or pass that link on to your Facebook friends. We'd greatly appreciate that. Uh, if you want to support us and keep us free and keep us going, we are 100% listener supported. So your support means a lot to us. Um, a lot of people are doing that on Patreon and that really is a great way to do that. You can go to extremehealthradio.com slash support and you can donate, you know, a dollar a month or five bucks a month or whatever you see fit. Um, it, it turns out per show and you can put a monthly cap on that. So, um, and also I want to thank all of you guys for uh, also buying through our Amazon link. We so greatly appreciate that. That's so nice. And that's another way to support us. Just every time you make a purchase on Amazon, going through our link and bookmarking that, it's probably easier to bookmark it and then go through the bookmark every time you make a purchase. But that really helps us a lot. So we really appreciate um, all of your support, sharing our shows on Facebook and, uh, you know, of the shows that you like. That really helps us a lot. And, um, don't forget to visit our store as well. We've got tons of great products in our store. So you can go peruse that. We've got the rebate.